All right, we're back. My name is Jesse, and today we're going to be going over this solar pergola build, and we're also going to be going over another uh, Facebook marketplace find. Um, but I'll cover the Facebook marketplace find uh, some used solar uh, some used solar equipment for cheap. Um, I'll cover those a little later, but first we'll dig into this kind of solar pergola build. Um, a lot of people like to ask, what's the best way to go about um, kind of mounting solar? Where should you do it? What's the equipment that you need? And I'm just going to go over a couple ways that I go about it. Uh, these solar pergolas are like my favorite way to go about it, but you can also mount them on your roof, on a porch. You can do ground mounts, a lot of different ways. Uh, my least favorite is the roof. Um, a lot of different reasons, but a big one for me is I just, I don't like drilling a bunch of holes on the roof. Um, I know you could seal it. It's not going to leak, but I, I'm just not a fan of it. And then um, depending on where you live and your HOA, and for, for instance, my sister, um, she lives in an HOA. I don't, but if she were to install solar on her house, it's a fee that she has to pay for having the solar on the roof. Um, I don't know if it's a monthly fee or just like a one-time fee, but there's a cost associated with that because the HOA doesn't want you doing that. Um, the other thing is, um, depending on your homeowner's insurance uh, policy, um, you may have to pay a premium. Uh, again, because you're drilling a lot of holes in the roof and you're putting a lot of weight on the structure of the roof. And it's, it's like, a, I think it's more of a liability and a risk for them. And if they're gonna cover you, they're gonna charge you a premium. Um, they may not, but uh, from the research I've done, most most insurance companies will. Um, and then the other thing is, I will say, is if you're installing solar on a roof and it's just like a single story home and like, you know, the, the, the slope, the pitch on the roof is, is not very steep, then it's not bad at all. You can climb up there with a the ladder, it still sucks, but you, you can do it fairly easy by yourself if you're trying to like DIY it and save some money. But if you got some crazy pitch on your roof or it's a two story home, then it gets way harder, a lot more expensive to you know try and DIY it yourself. Um, the other thing I'll mention too is, oh man, the pool pump just turned on. Of course it did. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is, um, if you need to replace the shingles on your roof, tiles on your roof, uh, the air conditioner, you need to replace something on your roof um, and the solar system is in the way, well, you got to take all that stuff off to replace the shingles or the tile or the air conditioning unit or something. It's just, it's more work. And so that's why I'm not the biggest fan of uh, of these kind of solar systems on roofs. But my favorite way to go about it is the kind of solar pergola build. Let me see if I can pause the pump here. All right, I paused the pump. Let's kind of go over this here. Let's see if I can get a close up here. See if I can get some better angles here. There we go. And then I'll, I'll kind of give some more close-ups with my other phone here. But so this kind of uh, solar pergola, it used to be just like a, like a, like a covering here. It had these four posts and it had like a corrugated roofing material on top of here. But the difference was uh, when I originally built this a couple years ago, and I'll try to put a picture within this video so you can kind of gauge what it used to look like. But the, the roof was angled north. This way is north and this way is south. The roof was angled north, and so I couldn't use the existing roof that was there. I could have just took off. Had I built it in the, when I first built it and I angled it south, I could have just took the corrugated roofing material off and just mounted the solar on there. But uh, because the angle of the roof was facing north, yeah, that's the worst possible angle for uh, solar. You always want, if you live in north uh, of the equator, you want your solar, um, your solar system, your solar panels mount uh, facing south. Depending on where you live, the angle is going to be a little bit different. But for Arizona, I want to say like the average is like 30-ish degrees year round. For the summer, you want it more flat. For the winter time, you want it at a higher angle. But average, if you're trying to do averages, like 30 degrees. And it's pretty good year round. This is probably only like 15 or 20, but I didn't want some crazy angle. Um, but uh, the, the main thing I had to do to kind of reconfigure this was just uh, change the angle of the roof. Um, so that meant sawing the back half of these posts. Um, I think it was like seven inches down and then i left this the same so my angle would now flip the other way south and then all i did was these simpsons these uh, kind of post brackets here i already had them because that's what the original covering had but i used these brackets that kind of hold the post and this is a four inch by six inch by 16 foot uh, beam post and i just laid that post on top of here i think that the span between the posts that are in the ground to the other corner is 12 feet and then this overhang is about two feet and so these are 16 foot beams 
and then I have one here, one here, and then these are just two by four rafters um, that are being secured with some, I think these are three inch or two and a half inch wood screws. And then this Simpson strong tie like bracket that kind of like a diamond shaped um, and it just kind of holds the, the rafter in place. Um, and then I just um, laid these rafters every two feet and there's a little bird's mouth that I cut in here. So the rafter sits kind of flush on this beam, but uh, I've seen people do it without, you know, making that little bird's mouth cut. And so the rafter just kind of lays, it's kind of like at an angle like that. It's not the best, but you can do it. You know, it works fine. But if you can make the bird's mouth, it's just, it's just a more stable and it's going to be a, a better structure and it's not hard to do. Um, so once I had all the rafters every two feet, then I laid these, uh, two by fours on top of these rafters and so these two by fours stretch all the way across i think these are like 16 or 17 feet long um they're not actually like one continuous piece they're like two eight footers and then like a little small piece that i use to make this stretch from here to the other end and so these kind of two by fours here they provide the kind of mounting surface for the solar panel but they also um, kind of give this roof of this structure kind of um, more strength. It it doesn't let these rafters kind of twist and turn. They don't want to fold because now they're being held together by one continuous piece. But let me see if I can get my phone here and then I'll kind of give you another angle here. So most of these solar, let me see, most of these solar panels, they come from the factory with like pre-drilled holes. Here's one right here and there was another one right here. And so that's all I did. I just used those pre, pre-drilled holes. I used those pre-drilled holes and this is a quarter inch bolt, a washer. And then on the top side here, let's see if I can get an angle over here. Uh, I don't know if you could see it. No, I'm not gonna be able to see it. Let's see if I can come this way. There we go. You can see it right here. Perfect. So there's the, the washer, there's the bolt, and that's kind of how I mount, I've kind of secured the, the solar panels onto the roof and then each corner has a quarter inch bolt, a washer, and then a nut. So it's the same thing, top and the bottom, all the way across here. And then same thing on the bottom ones. And I added these kind of triangles at the end with like some scrap four by four posts that I had kind of give the structure more strength from like wanting to twist and turn. But this is by far my favorite way to go about doing solar, uh, primarily because uh, you get like a dual purpose benefit. You get to mount your solar and then um, you get to use this as like a shed or, you know, um, a covering for your pool pump equipment. I live in Arizona and the summers here are brutal. And if you don't cover your plumbing and the pool pump and the sand filter, like you just shorten the lifespan because it's so hot out here. The sun just degrades and decomposes all the material. It just shortens the lifespan where if you can cover it, at least keep it out of the sun, you get, you're going to get a longer lifespan out of it. Um, but that's kind of the solar pergola build. If you guys have questions. Please uh, kind of put them in the comments. I'll try and answer the best I can. Um, but now we'll go over the Facebook Marketplace find. Um, so I'll kind of give a little shot here of what they are, just so you guys can see them. These are Canadian solar 385 watt solar panels. Um, 43.9 VOC and then 10.5 to IMP. So uh, these were $60 a piece and the guy had seven of them. He originally had 17, but um, I waited too long and somebody beat me to them and they bought 10. So he only had seven left. So I bought all seven. They were $60 a piece and these are like four or five years old and $60 for 385 watt solar panels. is not really, in my opinion, it's not really that good of a deal. Um, it's okay. It's, it's, it's decent. It's a fair price, I think. But the guy was selling these uh, solar panels with a micro inverter. And that's these ones. These are 
Enphase, IQ8 plus microinverters. These are primarily used for like grid tied applications and I'm not going to be grid tying, um, but I've seen people use these in like an off grid type of setup. Um, and so I'm going to try and do some kind of testing, some, you know, experimenting with these microinverters primarily to see if I can uh, offset the, a little bit of the pool pump. Every time it kicks on, I want these microinverters to help offset this uh, pool pump. So right now these five, oh, that's, that's another thing I forgot to mention is these five uh, uh, Canadian solar panels, they're actually wired in series and they're connected to my mini split, which is over here. So that mini split is powered almost all day by these five solar panels. I don't need five to power that mini split. I think I only need three, but I put five on here because they came with those microinverters. So later I might rewire this where three of those power that mini split and two of them, I might use those microinverters to uh, help offset the pool pump. I don't know, we'll see. I may do some testing on it. <laughs> um, I've seen people kind of do it where they um, use it to offset like their air conditioner, or, like uh, irrigation pump. So it shouldn't be too hard to apply it to a pool pump, um, but we'll see. Um, yeah, and so the other thing I'll say is if you aren't checking the kind of used market for solar, you're missing out. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of a risk buying used stuff, but uh, for the most part, if you can get it like half off, uh, what they originally cost, I think it's, I think it's, uh, it offsets some of the risk. Um, so I got seven of these uh, panels and I got seven of those microinverters for 420 bucks. And so when I was over there, the guy had, um, he had them stored in a, like a storage, like facility. Um, and inside that storage facility, he had two more of these that were kind of cracked and busted. He was going to give them to me for free, but I, I didn't really want them. Um, but he also had two microinverters from those old uh, from those old busted solar panels. And he had the trunk cables that connect to these microinverters. And so I gave him 50 bucks and he sold me the two microinverters and the trunk cables for all those uh, microinverters. And so um, the microinverters alone are worth probably a hundred bucks. I've seen them on Facebook Marketplace for like a hundred bucks. And so uh, I should have bought all 17, but I just, I waited and somebody bought 10 of them. And I, once somebody bought 10 of them, I was like, oh man, I was like, I better just go buy the last seven. And so uh, that's this kind of next Facebook marketplace find that um, I came up on. Uh, if you guys got any questions, um, I'm gonna try and have a couple of videos where I'm still testing out the 6,000 XP. Maybe I'll connect the 6,000 XP to the pool pump, run it, or I'll, I'll connect it to the Tesla and do some videos on it charging, uh, but we'll see. Um, anyways, I will catch you guys on the next one.